Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Conservation Commission hearing for Wednesday, April 11th, 2018. Uh, three public hearings on the agenda. First one is with a notice of intent filing with the MBTA, and I know that the rep for the MBTA is here. Name for the record, please, sir. My name is. Use a mic. Grab a mic, yes, you'd like that. <sighs> My name is David Perry. I'm the project manager for the Franklin Double Track Project. I'm a project manager with the MBTA Capital Delivery Department. Okay. Uh, what type of, uh, do you have anything for the whiteboard? This project filing here has uh, a minimal amount to do with conservation because the area that this second track is going in is in, a th in an area of pre-disturbed land, so basically there's no impact on resource areas because the land has already been disturbed uh, previously. But that being said, I think I'm gonna have this gentleman give everybody, since you're here, an overview of where the track is going and why, and just let you see the setup. I'm assuming some of you folks are butters to this? Yeah. All right, very good, so why don't we away from the conservation issues and just give us an overview of where it's going and what you're doing and perhaps why. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, I'll try to be brief since this isn't directly related to the, uh, to the filing, but uh, I've put together a few slides to basically uh, show you the overview and, uh, and then perhaps we can take some, some questions, but I'll defer to the, right. to the board. Uh, next slide, please. The existing uh, commuter rail line uh, dates about 100 years ago on the right of way from Reedville, where it joins up to the main line that goes to Providence, all the way out to Franklin Dean College. It's a pretty straight shot. It was originally built as a, as a way to get from New York to Boston as a straight shot. Um, and it was, back then, two tracks. So the, the right of way and the, and the basic rail bed ex already exists. Um, however, sometime we think in the 50s, it, the second track was removed, and now there's only a single track there today. That's a constraint to operations. It reduces traffic, of, you know, reduces the amount of trains that we can run, and it reduces the overall capacity. It also uh, hinders our reliability. If a train, you know, get, breaks down, we can't, you know, we're stuck. We've got to get a train and move it out of there instead of being able to go around it. Um, the Franklin line is one of the highest ridership lines on the system. So we're interested in improving service. Next slide. What we're proposing to do and what we've designed to do is about three and a quarter miles of double track. This is the initial part of a bigger program to, do, to restore double track out to Franklin. Right now, we're just talking about going from uh, a place called Walpole West. So if you're standing at the Walpole Station and looking out towards Norfolk, you'll see that there's a short area of double track. And that short area of double track ends at a place in Walpole called Walpole West. What we're going to do is we're going to take that double track that ends there at Walpole West and extend it 3.27 3 miles to Rockwood Road in downtown Norfolk. Um, that will give us a little bit better operations a little bit better resiliency, a little bit better flexibility. Right now, uh, if you ride the trains, you know that, that we hold trains there and they have to stop while other traffic passes. Having the second track here, that, uh, again, it's a short section in, in the terms of a railroad, three miles isn't very much, but it will allow for those trains to keep moving while the other train is, is going. So it's the concept of, you know, the same as a highway, two, two, uh, two directional, bi-directional travel. Uh, next slide. Oh, uh, so this is a map of where we're talking about. You can see that this is the town line, uh, right, cutting through there in the middle. The um, majority of the work is in Walpole, and, and it, I, although it's almost half and half, I think it's 1.3 miles in, in uh, Norfolk. 1.5 miles in Norfolk and, uh, and 1.8 in, in Walpole. Uh, the new track is on the north side of the existing track. So again, if you're standing at the Norfolk Station looking towards Walpole, that's on the left. I've got a bigger one we can zoom in. I can also share this with you if you want it. Next slide. 
there's a couple of considerations that I wanted to bring to your attention because this is kind of uh, gets wrapped up in a lot of other things that are going on with the EBTA. The first one is the positive train control project is going to be working on the on the Franklin line and if you're if you've been following it the Franklin line is shut down for the weekends in April and May that's for the positive train control project they're installing telephone poles and fiber optic cable to support a federally mandated system positive train control that will uh, allow for the tr for better safety uh, it's, again, it's federally mandated. We're, we're, uh, it's every train system across the country is doing this. Um, so it's really separate from this Franklin Double Track project. And this is going on throughout the MBTA commuter rail system. So that positive train control and the, and the shutdown uh, in April and May is really not associated with this project that we're talking about here tonight. Um, as, uh, it, however, because the railroad is going to be shut down on those weekends, Keolis, our operator, is going to take advantage of those shutdowns and do some work on some culverts uh, that are all in Walpole. So there's three culverts, uh, tunnels under the railroad track that move water from one side to the next, and those are going to be fully replaced. And when those are replaced, we completely dig up the tracks, we make a huge cut into the, into the railroad, we take the tracks out, dig right down to the culvert, dig it up, replace it, and then build it all back up. Again, not in Norfolk. Those are three locations in Walpole. Um, but it's a good chance for us to do that before we put a second track on top of there. We can go and just rip out one track. The system's already shut down for PTC. It's a win-win. It's a uh, the other, other things I wanted to make note of here, uh, at Seekonk Street, we're going to be putting in a new grade crossing. So all new equipment, new gate arms, new flashing lights. Uh, we don't just... Um, you know, move stuff around. It's going to be all new equipment, probably not that interesting to you. However, on the north side of Seekonk Street, there will be some roadway work that will have to be done. If we put in the second track, that kind of changes the grades, and the, and the grade coming up to that would be too steep. You know, low bed trucks would bottom out. So we're going to fix that by, you know, regrading the, the, the approach to that street for a few hundred feet back on the street. Again, not a wetlands commission issue, it's uh, just, just so you, you note of it. Although we're doing three and a quarter miles of track, there's no changes that we're proposing to the number of trains, to the train schedule, or to um, any kind of operational issues like that. Three and a half miles gives us some good operational flexibility and some good resiliency. It's not enough to increase the number of trains on the system on the Franklin line yet. Later, when we get double track for the rest of the, I think, 11 miles out to, Forge, uh, out to uh, Franklin Dean College, that's when we could start considering doing schedule changes. But that's years, years, years away. Uh, this, the scope of the project ends, and this is kind of a poor um, picture, but you can see the track will just dead end at Rockwood Road. Uh, right next to the convenience store on the, uh, on the opposite side of Rockwood Road, away from Norfolk Station. There'll be a switch, uh, you know, a couple of switches, a crossover, so that trains can come off of that double track, come back onto the single track, and pull into Norfolk Station. Next uh, slide. Uh, there's one thing that I want to, to point out. Again, not a Wetlands Commission issue, not in a buffer <coughs> zone, um, but... Uh, what we think happened over the 50 or so years while there's only been a single track, it's possible that the existing single track has migrated. You know, as they resurface it and as they realign it, it's possible that that single track has migrated more towards the center of the alignment of the original two tracks. So we're not going to do anything to that existing track. If we were going to have to do that, we would have to shut down service. The project would grow in scope and it would be much more expensive. So we're going to leave that existing track where it is. What that means is that when we go to put in the second track, it's a little bit further north than probably the original second track was. At this location, just we're looking, this picture is uh, at Seekonk Street. You're looking west, mm -hmm. back towards uh, Norfolk Station, back towards downtown Norfolk. You can see the little memorial garden is right there on your left. There's a, a ledge outcropping that we're going to have to shave a little bit off uh, do some, uh, probably just with a, uh, an excavator, a, a hammer, a rock hammer, not blasting, although 
uh, you know, we haven't determined that yet. Uh, but just, just to let you know that there's, you know, there's a little bit of, uh, of construction work like that to, uh, to get the, uh, the second track where it needs to be. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, the next slide uh, just has uh, my con uh, go uh, the other way. There you go. I've set up a, a voicemail and, a, and an email. Um, so if you want to get in touch with me, uh, that's the way to get in touch with me. I can email you uh, the plans, the, the filing, uh, get you more information. Uh, you know, we can talk offline so we don't uh, bog down this if it's non-wetlands uh, non uh, kind of questions. Um, and, I'll, and I'll be around after the meeting, uh, you know, out in the hallway to, to answer any questions that are uh, not related to the filing or, or however we want to do that. Um, that's all I've got, Mr. Chairman. What, <coughs> excuse me. I know that you're in a uh, previously disturbed area, but what resource areas will you be working in? We've got uh, another PowerPoint um, that we can take a look at that goes through the, um, the wetlands filing. All right. So if you want to bring up that other PowerPoint. So these are track plans, and I'll uh, warn you that in the MBTA world of commuter rail, Boston is always to the left, and wherever we're going is to the right. So these are all upside down. <laughs> North is to the bottom, and south is to the top. So I apologize <coughs> for being a railroad guy that thinks upside down. Uh, this is the, so we're starting at the, these, I've got a, a bunch of sheets here that, that show uh, what's going on. And this one is starting uh, at the town line of Walpole and Norfolk. So this is right here. You can kind of faintly see the, uh, the power lines that are right at the town line between Walpole and Norfolk. The, the power lines and the uh, town line intersect there. This is right in the area of where Lincoln Road uh, comes close to the train tracks. And, you, and there's a gate there where we can access. So that's actually shown... Uh, it's hard to see, but that is where, oh, right here. You can see there's a fenced off staging area where we'll have uh, some staging for the equipment. That's where we'll access the, the right of way. And then all the work will be done directly from the right of way. There'll be no, we're not going to have to plow through people's backyards or build access roads. All the work will be done directly from the right of way, either accessing it here or at the little uh, dirt lot that we have at Seekonk Street. To your point, to your question, the uh, resource areas um, are shown here in, uh, in green, right? Is that the, Addie? Yeah, there's three isolated wetlands on the south side, and the work for the track ends here will be done on the north. So, so right, so in the green are the, are the wetlands areas, the green highlighted. The yellow is the, uh, is the limits of disturbance for our project, and the pink is the, uh, is the erosion control. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The, Pink is the limit of disturbance, well, and the, and the yellow is the limit of work, and we don't have the, the erosion control. Uh, well, yeah, if you go down one slide, you might find some. There we go. The blue is the, oh, the blue is bank. Green is, uh, is, is wetland again. The limit of disturbance will be your... Uh Limit of uh, the buffer zone. So the limit of disturbance. Can you use the microphone? Yes. Please. Yeah, the limit of disturbance. In this one. Okay. Yeah, the, li the limit of disturbance is where the uh, track would go and the grading for the track on the north side. And in this case, for those other isolated wetlands, there wasn't a buffer zone, but for this side, there is a buffer zone for the Highland Lake and Stop River. And we've actually put a wall in, in this location to keep out of Stop River, which is on the north side in this location. Yeah. Where is there, is the buffer zone shown on so here? It's is, can't, that's yeah, the river that's bank, the river that's the riverfront front area. This is the buffer Here's zone. Here's the buffer zone, Yep. That, that line right here. So um, there is work within the buffer zone, um, especially where the culverts cross the tracks. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no there's no work directly in any wetlands area because it's all the works on the tracks. Yeah, all the work is <coughs> staged from the buffer zone in a few locations where work was going to be close to the 
resource area such as this, we put in retaining walls to stay out of the resource area. Thank you. Janet, questions for? Uh, oh, we're still going, right? Yeah, we can no, keep walking yet. along. This, this is, uh, uh, before we leave this one, this is uh, Seekonk Street right here. Again, you can see this area uh, where we're proposing to use as a staging area. Again, that's outside of a buffer zone. That's outside of a, of a, of a wetland. Um, but just to kind of give you a, a location, this is Seekonk Street. And that's an intermittent stream crossing in that location. Right, uh, right here. Yep. So next slide. This is, uh, again, uh, west to east. Uh, sorry, east to west. Even I get confused. Um, so here we've got some, uh, and I, which? Um, Lake Lateral? Oh, yes, the Man Lake Lateral. So this is, uh, this is the, the, the culvert that runs underneath um, the train tracks that, uh, uh, for, for Man Lake. And this location will also be putting a buried signal cable on the south side. Um, so there's erosion control where that's going on that side. But in most locations, it's just the north where we're doing work but that won't involve any work within those resource areas. It's all gonna be at, you know, up at the track level or- Right, you can see that the resource the areas are, are off the track and the, uh, and the limits of work are, are outside. The, the pink and yellow limits of work are up on the right of way outside of the resource areas. Okay. Next sheet. So this is the last sheet uh, we're moving towards uh, Rockwood uh, Road and Norfolk Station, which is over here. Uh, there's one isolated, or no, I guess this isn't an isolated. That's a... That's a depression, but it's associated with a tributary to Man Pond, so it's, it's shown with the buffer zone. So you can see the buffer zone in a, in a semicircle around it, and uh, you can see that the work is on the right-of-way outside of the resource area, but within the buffer zone. And uh, the next couple of slides are just some basic, uh, you know, typical details of, um, of erosion control measures. And, oh, this one is uh, in certain areas uh, where we can't fit a swale alongside the railroad track, we put a drainage pipe. Right. Uh, and that's shown in section right here. Uh, and it is shown on the plans in, in, your, uh, in your package. And that, uh, that under drain uh, terminates at certain locations with a flared and uh, stone uh, riprap protected outfall, which again are shown in various locations. So on the north side of the track, there's this drainage is captured either in a vegetated swell or that perforated under drain to collect all the water and discharge, and then it's all discharged at the flared end stone protection outlets. And then this sheet shows, uh, yeah, if you can go down another sheet. This is our uh, typical erosion control measures. Um, there's different types of erosion control measures depending on the area that we're in. Um, and those are shown on, on your plans. Okay. So we specified either straw bale, compost filter tube, or silt fence in, in combination with each other or by itself. And that will be part of the construction contract documents that he's got to use those where we show in the location shown on the plans. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> uh, so the um, schedule, uh, we're finishing up design, and uh, we'll be bidding this out uh, for construction uh, over the summer. We plan on going to construction later this year, maybe, maybe September time frame, not yet determined, but the project is funded. Uh, we do have funding, and we are, um, this, this is going to happen. So How long will it take? This construction schedule for the double track is about 18 months. Uh, one of the constraints on uh, activating this track and putting it into service is we're gonna have to replace one of the West Street bridges in Walpole. Uh, we took a look at, at, the, at one of those bridges. I think you're probably familiar with them. They're very narrow and, and offset. They've got like a dog leg to get through them. Uh, that one of those bridges is gonna have to be fully replaced. We thought we could replace the superstructure and use the, or we thought we could fix the superstructure then we didn't. Then we thought we could replace the superstructure. Then we figured, you know what, this isn't just going to work. We're going to re rebuild the whole bridge. 
That bridge project is going to take a little bit longer than our double track project, so there'll be a little bit of a gap before we can put this track into service. So the contract will include the permit and these plans, and the contractor will be required to prepare a stormwater pollution prevention plan for his construction activities in addition to what you're seeing for erosion controls. And that's part of the construction contract specifications. The only other thing in my notes that I wanted to mention is we will be doing, for the retaining wall uh, near Highland Lake, we will be doing some borings. Again, we're probably going to try and take advantage of the, uh, of the outage that's happening uh, over the next few weekends and go out there and do some borings. Again, not in a resource area, up on the track, uh, just some geotechnical borings to take a look and see how we need to design the, um, design the, uh, the, uh, the retaining walls. Not subject to a f not subject to the borings aren't subject to the filing, but I wanted to be upfront and mention that that's the first activity you're going to see in terms of our construction. Yeah, you're on. <laughs> it always comes down to me. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to mention this because I don't expect this to happen in Norfolk. <coughs> it did happen in my town yeah. when the MBTA came through and did their thing left yep. and mm -hmm. never came back to take care of their erosion control. That's just cleaning up Fair your, point. your room after. It's Absolutely. Done. When you're talking about the stormwater and all that into the contract, we're... Construction stormwater uh, prevention, pr pollution prevention plan. Oh, okay, plan. okay, okay. Associated now, with their construction activities. Right, okay, fine. And then when you're talking about the drainage pipes, if you have to do those with the swales, is that still staying in your right of way? Yeah, not, go back to, uh, we can, uh, we can, we can take the, a look at one. It's, it's, it's pretty easy to see. It's not resource, right? Um, it's pretty easy to see. Like, here's one of the locations. They're really easy to pick out because you can kind of see our limit of disturbance kind of jogs out a little bit. Um, so this is where the, this is, you can see that in this case, the pipe is draining along uh, to the east this way, and then that's one of those structures that'll, that'll drain out. But uh, not draining to a resource area, right? Or onto uh, someone's property? Well, Are you staying in your right of way? Yes, we're staying in the right of way. And we, that's, those flared end sections are designed to prevent. Speak into the microphone oh, there, yeah. Addy. Yeah, the, um, those flared end sections are designed to prevent any erosion. So they're, you know, it's, it's designed to outlet safely without causing the slope to erode out or the wetlands to wash out. Does that water basically infiltrate when it comes out of the pipe? Yes. yes. That's all it is. All yes. Right. It was designed for a 50 year storm. Right. Okay. It, normally, if we're issuing an order of conditions that's three years to get that done, will this be done in yes. three years? Yes. That's adequate. Okay. Yeah. All right. Will we have. Because if there's, it, it's, and I don't like leap of faith in, in uh, conservation, but normally we're able to view projects, see if there's issues or concerns or anything. We don't really have access to this whole thing. Yes. You can call me up anytime, and I can get you out there. Does somebody? I'll have a resident engineer who works for me, who will be f an MBTA employee, who will be full-time um, on the project, on and the then site? I also have yes, and then I also have inspectors okay. who work on the site who work for him, that are out there, uh, you know, watching over the contractor's work. So no, once we get to that point, we can get you co in contact with that resident engineer, Super. and and we can get you access. We can escort you out onto the railroad property. Well, even just the contact in case there's concerns from people. Absolutely, it's, it's a way to have contact. And my intent is to leave that phone number and that email open for the next, you know, couple of years, so that people can get in touch with me too. Okay, so basically, this area has already been disturbed. You're just redoing this area that's been disturbed. Correct. At, I think one place you're moving in a fence. You're doing what you need to do to update and make sure this is all safe. Um, yes, and that's a good point. Also, I'll, I will point out that. Um, we did an extensive research into the uh, um, uh, real estate uh, issues and, and property lines. And we were concerned that, you know, if the track has moved and, you know, our, 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 is the real estate screwy? It is not. There's no indications that we are going to have to do any re uh, real estate takings uh, or any encroachment onto anyone else's property. Uh, like you mentioned, especially, um, 
at the Rockwood Road end of the project, there's a fence on the north side where we're going to be working. That fence is at the top of the slope right now. We're going to be taking that fence down and putting it at the bottom of the, and putting a new fence at the bottom of the slope. Again, still within our property and our right of way, but moving that fence gives us a little bit more room to work. Um, just a point because I've been checking, 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 and then 317 this afternoon, DEP actually did issue you your file number. So I saw that, yes, thank they, you. Um, so we're good to go with that. Um, it, you know, it, it's, it's just tough with all this, per se, is in people's backyards and on the train tracks, and we're, we're not supposed to be in any of those places without permission. So we're going to have to, as far as I'm concerned, go with what you've done on this, and hopefully you've done it all properly. Um, and that's it, is I think as long as we have the contact information in case there's any issues or anything. Correct. Um, does this get, I'm just double checking, does this get recorded at the Registry of Deeds? Yes, we are going to be recording it. Um, and to your point, this will all be, this set of plans and the permit application will be part of the construction contract for the con contractor. So there will be specification sections that tell him what he's got to adhere to in the order of conditions and it'll incorporate some of the things that you've mentioned, like removing erosion controls and whatever else is in the order of conditions that will be uh, conditions of the contract with the contractor. So he's got to comply with it. Do you have certain <coughs> wetland conditions that are built into that contract ahead of time? Yeah, we yes. do. We There are standard specs that we use. So we have one for the NIPTI SWIP that requires him to repair a NIPTI SWIP. Um, I'm trying to think. For contaminated materials, we have a spec that if there's anything that is might be contaminated, what he's got to do with that. Um, there's one for temporary controls, noise. You know, we kind of try to cover everything and put it into the as part of conditions of the contract. Super. The only the only question I have is any of these drainage that we're, you have to use the net where it's narrow that you have to put in the, the piping, is any of that ending in anything other than um, looks like most of the project is on sandy soil. Right. Is it any of it ending in not sandy soil? Because I'm afraid that we do have a 50, 100 years storm episode that some of the, the neighbors could end up with some severe flooding depending on how long that pipe is and the amount of water going through it if it's not going to end in the sandy soil. So go, uh, go up so a slide. So the two locations where there are floodplains are this Man Lake Lateral and the Highland Lake. Um, so those are the two locations where FEMA has identified a floodplain. Um, and we did run the hydraulic calcs to kind of size the pipes and make sure the drainage. Um, in preparing the notice of intent, they complied with the stormwater policy and all the conditions as far as flows and the, how everything was sized and the outfalls to make sure everything was sized property, properly and to comply with the Massachusetts stormwater policy. But the two locations where you actually have a flood uh, floodplain is at Highland Lake um, and also at uh, at the Man Lake Lateral. Those are the two locations. And so in, in this case, we're discharging kind of so, this, so in this case, we're not discharging directly. We're discharging to this location over here. That's the Highland Lake. And then the Man Lake Lateral, I think, was on the other. Yeah, go down a slide. Yeah, and again, we're not discharging directly. We're discharging off of here. But when our stormwater folks went through this, they are looking at floodplains. They are looking at hydraulics. They did a 50-year storm. They sized everything according to, you know, they looked at watersheds and all that in doing the design for the drainage calcs. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from the board members? Just like I said, this project is pretty benign with it working in a previously disturbed area, so there's minimal risk, if any, of uh, disturbing any resource area. But uh, what I, <coughs> excuse me, what I can do now, normally we keep everything within the jurisdiction of our board, but I think we've got folks here that are going to be abutting or near this, this uh, project. If you have any general questions about the project, I think we'll allow some of those short term and then we'll move on, okay? So if you have any questions, just state your name, your address, and uh, forward the question to this gentleman. 
Hi, my name is uh, Mark Wakevich. I have the property of 7, 9, 11, 13 Lincoln Road. Um, it's on the north side where the track is going to be coming. In front of my house, there is a grade from the street to where the tracks are, about 25 feet uh, upward along this entire stretch. It's about three, 400 yards from the Campbell Street Bridge up until the Norfolk Walpole Town Line. And it's filled with trees in there, and it's a great sound barrier. Is there any of those trees going to be removed? And if so, will they be replanting them? Great question. I am familiar with, with the area that you're talking about. And yes, there will be tree removal in that area. Um, that is the that is the side of the, of the um, right away that we will be installing the, um, the second track. Um, so there is, it's, it's potentially, it, it's, I would say that it's probable that there are trees that have grown up uh, within our right of way that we never maintained and, and took down as we should have all over the past 50 years because we didn't need to. So there will be some, some tree removal uh, along that side of the, of the track and, and, um, and that tree removal is being done again as part of the PTC project and, and, the, uh, and, the, uh, the, uh, and it's being done under the uh, 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 vegetation management plan that Keolis operates under, which is not subject to the filing. It's a, it's a management plan that's, uh, that's, that's uh, annually updated uh, by the railroad. Um, so to your, to directly to your question, yes, there will be tree removal, and no, there's no plans to replace any trees that are removed or any brush that's removed. The only trees that are going to be removed are within the right-of-way. Uh, and, and, um, and when uh, Northern Tree, the company that's doing it, you can see what they've, they've been working in Walpole. Um, when they do uh, come to a point uh, that's very close to a uh, house, so if there's a backyard right there, they will come and talk to the, to the uh, abutter uh, and make contact before they start working directly in someone's backyard. Um, but to, to your, to your, the answer to your question is yes, there will be tree removal. Anybody else? I don't. I'm Marcello Santoni. I'm at 5 Lincoln Road. My neighbor is Mark. Uh, I applaud what you're doing with the environment. I applaud what you're doing with the commuters. How about the abutters now? You just mentioned something about the sound level. I could be standing right next to Matt right here. Train goes by. We have to stop our conversation. All right. Now the train is getting closer to us. I already get vibrations in my house. I have cracked windows because of the vibrations. What is this going to do to that? So this, uh, this microphone's louder. Uh, I, I understand your concerns. I, I, hear, I hear what you're saying. Um, we're not proposing to increase the speed limit of the trains. We're not, and at this point, we're not talking about any increase in the train traffic over the line. So there won't be an increase in frequency of the trains. Um, I can say that, that with the work that we'll be doing, we'll be stabilizing the roadbed and upgrading the roadbed. Uh, so there should be an improvement in the condition of the roadbed and the condition of the, the dynamic load that, that the trains uh, encounter going across the, the roadbed. Um, other than that, um, you're right. Um, it, you're right. It's, 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 trains are noisy and, and, the, and, they, and they're heavy and they produce an, an impact to the surrounding community. Oh. I, I can't, you know, that's, that's all I can say. I can't, we're, we're not, the MBTA does not install sound barriers. I, I'm not even sure that they would be effective at the, at the distances that we're talking to, to, to abutters. Um, Come by my house. It'll, it'll be effective. So, uh, that, yeah, that's all I can say. I, but if you, if you plant trees like uh, Jolly Greens or Green Giants, okay, that will help the sound, the noise pollution that we're getting right now. I'm watching TV inside my house. Good thing for DVRs, I can pause it so I don't miss any of it. So the problem right, this with... Is, this, this is a serious problem. I'm outside grilling. I can't speak to my wife. Mm -hmm. So the problem with trees on the right-of-way is that uh, they do a couple of things. They fall on the right-of-way, 
and they fall on the on the on what we're going to be installing for this PTC, the fiber optic cable that's going to be strung on poles. Um, so that's a problem. And then also uh, they um, the leaves as they fall off uh, produce a protein that gets stuck to the tracks and makes the tracks slippery, and trains lose adhesion and you have slippery rail conditions, which is bad for the trains and it's bad for the traffic. So uh, it's a standard practice throughout the world to keep the right of way clear of trees. So stop it up, you're saying. What about the bank and next door? It doesn't have well, to be uh, right away. Nobody is speaking, sir. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> Name? Jack Tonabeni. I live at Eight Way Drive. All right, Jack. Um, I have about probably 400 feet of track running by my house and you haven't mentioned are you going to widen the the rail are you going to come make the track wider the the the, the, ra the rail bed the yeah, rail bed no um there's some sections where at the top of the slope we'll be adding a little bit of uh of of rip of ballast of, of rip wrap at the top of the slope but there's no uh there's no areas where we're where we're Making this this uh, you know the the, the section uh, wider. I, I, do we have a do we have a, a a plan that shows that? So we're not going to make the bank and any more coming into our yards or at all. The toe of the slope won't change. Does that help visualize it? So in most places in Norfolk and in Walpole, the 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 the, the railroad is raised up a. You know, like you mentioned, it's raised up uh, behind uh, houses and stuff. Um, and so, yeah. So this is a good this is a good example. Addie's uh, showing us a cross sectional view. Um, and and here, I'm sorry, this is all I've I've got. But this is a good example of a location where the 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 R O W uh, symbols there is the extent of our property. So that's the that's the edge of our property. Our property goes from there to there. The, um, you can see the shape, it's a hill. The, the track is built up on a hill. That d dashed line is where the hill is now. The solid line, you can see just under where we're putting in the new track is where we're gonna make the hill a little bit bigger. But that's all we're doing. It's just where that solid line is. It, and you can see it's nowhere near the toe of slope. So you're racing this? Oh, no, no. No, 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 no. The existing tr train track is right here. We're putting a new train track right next to it, and we're putting a little bit more ballast to just make the top of this slope a little bit wider so we can put our track there. Now, and when I say little bit, I'm talking like three feet. And the fence that is all along this, is it staying there, or is it dropping down to our property? There's, there's uh, the only place, uh, well, I believe, that the only place that we're moving the fence is um, uh, from Rockwood Road, let me, uh, I'd like to show the commission this before we get to that. Uh, the, the, this is the, 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 um, the right of way is our property lines. The dash line is the existing, is the existing grade. And that solid line at the top is where we're going to be adding a little bit of ballast and making quote unquote the hill a little bit wider. <coughs> so again, we're talking about, you know, three feet laterally away from the train track of adding a little bit of, of top of the slope. To your question about the fence, thank you, Addy. To your question about the fence, the only place where we're uh, relocating a fence is from Rockwood Road to the east. So that's um, behind the school. I believe there's an elementary school on the north side, uh, well off the tracks. Um, so there's a there's a, a it's it's a pretty significant distance of, of of fence, chain link fence. It's up at the top of the slope. We're going to be relocating it down to the bottom of the slope, or not all the way to the bottom of the slope, to our, to our, the edge of our property line. All the trash that we have been looking at for years, all the old ties on our property, all on your slope coming down to our property, is that going to be cleaned up in this project? I will make a note of that. Um, that's, not, that's an operational concern. I'm in capital delivery. I design things and build them. So I will take that back. Um, to, to, I understand. I, what I'm saying is that I'm not the person who, who does that, me personally, I, but I will take it back to railroad operations and talk to them about it. And if you can, you know, if you can get in touch with me, if you can take, me a, take a picture and email me a picture, 
that would be helpful. Give me an address, give me a place to go look at, and, and we can get that taken care of. Yeah, I just want to speak to the two microphone, uh, microphone. Oh. <laughs> I just, uh, I'm not an acoustical uh, expert, but I have worked on uh, with acoustical experts on these transportation studies, and the trees do not provide any significant, although they're a good buffer for visual, they don't really provide any significant attenuation. So when there's a need for noise reduction, they look at walls or earth berms. But the trees themselves. Not true. That's not true. The, the summer and winter. Yeah, the, the summer and the winter are different noise levels. All right, let's not. Unfortunately, we can't settle that dispute right now, and they're not going to be putting up any barriers. So, unfortunately, uh, I guess it is what it's going to be. I'm going to take a couple more questions, and then uh, we're going to have these folks leave their yes. numbers. Okay. All these that. things are outside the purview of the Conservation Commission, so we're going to have the folks leave the numbers and let you folks contact them directly on questions further. My name is Steve Bassick, and I live on 37. But can I give you a microphone, sir? Sure. I just before we sorry. go on, I just want to turn the question. You can just speak up, sorry. Sorry. So the constant Steve Bassick, at 37 Campbell. So uh, this wetlands on my property. So is that what the Conservation Commission will Correct. look into and Correct. help with this? Right. David, as you mentioned, is this already a done deal? Because I think you said this is happening no matter what, or not? So I thought I heard you say that in your. Your yes, this project, this project has been designed, it, it, uh, it is funded, and it is moving towards construction. Okay. So yes. it's already a done deal. So, so I guess the Conservation Commission, I would ask you guys how we protect the wetlands of my property. As I had mentioned, uh, they're not working in any resource area, already disturbed areas where this red bill is going. So really, there's nothing going to be enhancing on the buffer zones. What about the water, the flare? Are you talking about the flare piece? Yeah. You know, on Highland Lake? Where is that exactly? Because my, my land, Janet knows me. I'm on 31 Campbell Street, Mattawad, 31 Campbell Street, the big orange house. <laughs> I, I'm basically a wetland galore. So you're dumping water eventually from your train track onto my property to flood more, right? I, I, Where's the flare it's, end it's up? Diff yeah, I, I don't know w exactly where in the world this, this flared end uh, ends. Everything, you know, in that, everything in that area, everything in Highland Lake, everything on the other side of that bridge ends up in my backyard. So now you're adding more. And then you mentioned a retaining wall. Where's this retaining wall that you're drilling for? Retaining wall, the retaining wall, uh, this, is, this is the man pond lateral, so we're not even looking at Highland Lake. If no, you want to go other. up a slide. Here's uh, Highland Lake is, is, uh, is right here. There's a stone box culvert that carries, uh, carries it under there. Uh, so there is, there's a, a flared end right here uh, for, the, for the drain pipe. Yeah, that's this line right here is the proposed retaining wall. This is where we have to do borings to figure out exactly, and we have to do a little bit better, uh, more finer survey to figure out exactly what's going on to a high degree of detail. Um, and then this is right now what we're proposing to do. That's kind of the worst case scenario for so the I li wall. I live right there. I live in an old house, 1800s, okay. built on rubble. I spent two years with this town rebuilding that house. You're telling me you're going to drive piles no. into the ground? We don't How know. Do you retaining walls? Could you please you direct your questions to the board? I don't want to get into an argument he, between two people, okay? I'm a superintendent of construction. All right. Drive piles into retaining walls. How are you going to do that without fucking up my house? Part of my language. The Just piles to be are not near his house. Mr. Chairman, the um, the, uh, the 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 I already feel the vibration of the trains, let alone the pile driving and construction of anything. So now you got out a retaining wall right in front of my house. From finish. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, the retaining wall, the extent and the depth and the con exact uh, design of the retaining wall has not been determined yet. We envision this the, the need for this retaining wall to be. Probably three feet of exposed face retaining mm -hmm. wall. Um, so we're not talking about a giant retaining wall that's, uh, you know, that's a, a billboard size um, uh, uh, face where you're going to put graffiti on it. Um, there's a couple of different options we have for the kind of retaining wall that we might do, um, uh, and we and we haven't determined what we're going to do. It might be driven sheet piles, as you mentioned, um, or it might be uh, simply a concrete. Uh, L-shaped structure um, or a gravity wall. 
I guess it begs the question, for a three-foot retaining wall, why do you need piles? That seems Again, like a major, uh, major right. overkill. Yes, and well, a lot depends on the soil conditions. Right. Well, the soil conditions it? under, the lot depends on the soil conditions uh, below that, and that's why you have to do the borings to figure out if yeah, we can support the concrete borings wall. Are, and borings are digging with a backhoe and just coming down to a gravel base and probably put a cement footing in there. That's, that's our, we want to do yeah. the cheapest and easiest well, thing that's possible. In that case, possible. that's probably how it's going to go. So three, you said three feet exposed, right? That's that's yeah. That's so that's three feet exposed under the ground. You got to go like double to hold that up. You're holding soil back. So Correct. You're, you're driving down to the ground. Now, when my house starts cracking up, and everything that I've worked hard for, paid for out of my own pocket, two years goes to crap because you want to add another railroad to let another truck or another train drive by. Who? How does that happen? And actually, this is the first I've ever heard of this project. So I don't know. Explain to me, how do you dry piles in front of a house that, that old? The house already shakes when the train goes by. Because you don't, I, I, you don't I, live I, there. I hear so what you're you saying, really I hear what you're saying and I hear your concern. This is a typical construction that we've done. This retaining wall is in the area of a, of a culvert and in the area of a, of a wetlands. Um, and if it's near a house, we're going to use the utmost care to put it in um, without disturbing the surrounding areas. The idea that driving a sheet pile wall uh, would disturb a house that's probably at least 50 feet away, uh, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that scenario. I'm familiar, um, so I, sit, I sit in the house and the train drives by and I can feel it. I understand what you're saying. And, so and driving I, and sheets I, is worse, you're going now underneath I, right. I would not agree with that. All right, let's. Um, but I don't. I don't know yeah. that we can resolve. I don't know that I'm going to be able to say anything to resolve your concern. I know you're just so. a spokesman, and it's going to end up going through. But I, one more question. You lucked out. I, I can come out in the hallway, and we can talk more right. uh, afterwards. Lynn Worley, Five Malcolm Street, and I have. I hope what is a very benign question. I've looked at these. I am not seeing how everything fits onto a map of Norfolk. Do you have? slides, plans drawn that would show us streets, yes. intersections. If you go back to the first PowerPoint, um, and, I can, and I can email this to you. That, that would be perfectly then, fine. Then, yeah, if you go back to the first PowerPoint, like um, this uh, go um, up uh, towards the front. I think it's the second or third slide. There it is. Uh, okay. It's, it's, this is really, you know, this is not the greatest resolution. Right. But this does have all of the streets and, and everything. Here's Rockwood Road. Seekonk Street is right here. Uh, there's the, the power lines. Here's Lincoln Road right here. There's Campbell Street. There's the Campbell Street undergrade bridge right there. Here's the Highland Lake culvert that we've been talking about. Uh, uh, and then, yeah, well, then you're into Walpole. So if you scroll down this way, does, does this help? Yeah, I, it, I would. Uh I can get in touch with you. I still have yes. the letter and just have it emailed. So yeah, this is a huge it. file, but I can, you know, I can put it on an FTP site so you can download it or something like that. And, it, and if you don't have access to email, I can mail you a, car, a copy or, or anything, yeah. anything to help you visualize where this is. All right, thank you. All right, so if you could uh, answer some of these other questions for these folks out in the hall, that would be appreciated. We're sort of running behind schedule later. Yes. It really is in our jurisdiction. But... Uh, if you have another question, some other questions on the board, we have a motion to close this public hearing. I make a motion to close the hearing on the MBTA. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So if you could just go into the other side of the hall over there so we shut these doors for the next hearing, okay? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. In essence, you would have up there anyway. Yeah, you know, not too much time to visit the habit. It's a disturbed area. I'm not quite sure I understand the line. There was already activity on that area that they're working on, so when you redisturb an area, we don't count that as new disturbance. Is that the one you have? Is that the one you have? Exactly. Exactly. We won't. So that'll for you to answer your question. The, the control we have with the state yes, agency. Yeah. We'll keep one, yeah. You got it. You have, yeah. you got it. But if you run into problems, you can contact us gotcha. if there's flooding or whatever. And that's the one thing Janet will be doing. She monitors.
five years. When I first went to there, I wanted to get a lake beside my house. Well, they had a, a stormwater review by the DEP for this project. In theory, the stormwater should be contained in, in their own right of way. Okay. That's how they're supposed to review this. So in theory, no extra water should be going there. They're just pushing it down the slope more so it doesn't degrade the slope. But if you do have any excess flooding, absolutely get in hold of the town. Definitely Hopefully won't. you won't. Hopefully, Hopefully you won't. <laughs> yeah. That's where we asked the question about whether they had looked at 1,500 year episodes just to make sure that they had covered it in half. I was reading Because they had a feeling someone in the audience would have had that question. Of course. Of course. Thank you very much, guys. Thank You're welcome. Good evening. Thanks for coming. We have a request for continuance for the enclave at 7.05. So if we have a next meeting May 6th. What time is available, Amy? May 16th. May 16th, I'm sorry. That was 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, so we have a motion to move this we to... We have a 7 o'clock scheduled. 7.05. What town for 7? Lawrence Street Bridge. Oh, okay. Which may be... So we could move this to 7.05, the Enclave? So move, make motion. Second? Aye, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. okay. Next, we have 710, the uh, Columbia Gas of request for determination. Somebody here from Columbia Gas? Okay. Do you have the plans for Seekonk Street? Just so you folks know, there's a couple of postings. Mm -hmm. They've been approaching the town, this young fellow and a few others, for about a year now. <laughs> this uh, has no utility for the residents of Norfolk, although we did try to have future connections put in, etc. This, and you can correct me if I'm wrong if things have changed, but this is mainly just a, a connection to provide power to the uh, source they have in <coughs> Medfield. So this is just connecting two dead end lines to help the flow of the gas. It really isn't going to be offering anything new to the people of Norfolk. Although we did try to, as I said, try to get benefits for doing this, especially where the Seekonk Street was paved less than five years ago. Uh, it was to no avail. So that being said, um, just to introduce myself, my name is Chris right, Anderson yeah. with uh, Merrill Engineers and Land Surveyors, and I'm here on behalf of the applicant, Columbia Gas. Um, and I believe what you're saying is correct. It is a betterment project just to improve the overall distribution of the gas. And um, I'm sure you guys have talked to the gas company. I, I wouldn't be the one to talk to personally um, about, you know, potentially providing uh, service from this installation. Um, so that's really all I can I say about that, unfortunately. Um, but anyways, um, so the gas company is proposing to install, I believe it's approximately a mile long route along Seacon Street. Um, they're going to be installing both 8 inch high density polyethylene gas main and another section of 12 inch coated steel gas main. Um, this section shown right up here on the map is a small couple hundred foot section and is the only area that um, passes through a buffer zone to a resource area. Um, I believe it's an intermittent stream that actually runs under the road there through <laughs> a plastic ADS pipe culvert that was something Janet brought to our attention. Um, so we had the wetlands delineated and here shown in the red is where the gas main will be installed uh, within the right of way. The typical installation of a ga gas main is um, done by the open trench method, which is a typical backhoe. We'll dig a two to three foot wide trench, about four feet deep. Um, they'll lay the pipe in a bed of sand, backfill with whatever material is still usable from that excavation, haul the rest away. Um, and basically they'll only install what can be done in one day. So everything will be buttoned up at the end of the work day, cl cleaned up, um, no sediment will be left laying around. There will be no stockpiling of any materials within these buffer zones to resource areas. Um, the orange lines you can see on either side where the boarding vegetated wetlands are um, depict erosion control measures that will be installed prior to any work and upon completion of the work um, will be removed 
I know that was a concern with for, for what we heard with the MBTA project. Um, pretty simple, you know, no alteration of what's existing out there. Everything will go right back to its original state once complete. Um, to talk about the culvert crossing a little bit, um, we had a representative from the gas company go out and view the area, and they provided us some information, which I believe has been provided to you guys on um, kind of their typical standard, what will be done in that area. And basically, once they get up to that culvert, they'll saw cut the pavement, remove the pavement about three feet either side of the culvert, and hand dig um, under that culvert and basically install the gas main in that portion by hand, tamp it, uh, backfill by hand, and then pave over. Um, so there's no mach heavy machinery operating directly in the area of the culvert. Um, and also, it being a, an ADS pipe, it has a little more structural integrity than, say, you know, an old concrete or rusting metal pipe, which, um, you know, helps that situation. And if there ever were anything to happen, uh, we'd be fixing it and replacing it as well. How far is the pipe coming off the edge of the pavement? The gas pipe? Right. It's usually about four feet deep, but below the culvert. No, on the regular line going down Seacock Street, how far is the trench going to be off of the pavement? You know, I think that's something they determine in the field. You know, once it's all dig safe and other utilities are marked out, they'll make a determination. You know, we want to stay away from if I don't, oh, this right. is circumstantial, but if there's a water main on one side, you know, maybe they'll go on the so other will side. Will the road be closed? I don't believe just for the single, it'll probably be one lane shut down with passing areas and a police detail. Okay. And, um, you know, their actual operations, I'm not quite the person to ask on that, but, um, you know, a lot of times busy areas, they'll do work at night um, rather than, uh, you know, obstructing traffic during the day. So I read your email. So the only uh, interference with the resource is that culvert activity that's going to be Yep, just correct. this one section right here. All right. That's yep. actually the way that we, when we have culverts in town with driveways, we actually run the piping the same way underneath the bottom of the culvert. So, okay. Uh, Janet, you have questions for uh, this young man? Yes, because they had the whole thing about the, how they're doing the trench. It's going down about four feet. For, for right here? Yeah, as far as that culvert underneath the road, though, how f do we know how far down that is? It you know, four feet's the typical trench, but I'm not quite sure what the elevation of that is. Basically, they will go a foot below that. There'll be a foot separation from the top of the gas main to the bottom of culvert. Um, but if that pipe's coming through, is that gas pipe f flexible to go? Yeah, whether I'm not sure if that portion is the, the high density polyethylene or the coated steel, but you know they have angle points where they'll bend it around, and you know it's it's a very typical situation that they have to avoid other, whether it be drainage pipes or culverts, and it's kind of their, they have their standards and um, situations like this, and they'll definitely be able to get it under and have decent separation in material. Within did, that area. did somebody actually go and view? Is there is there a top and bottom to this, or is this just like a little cave thing and, and it's a bottom? Nope, it's it's actually I believe Dana sent you some pictures on it. How um, much can you see without getting down into the water? So it's yeah, they went out and basically came back with that would be the solution to do you know the hand trenching and actually get underneath that. Um, and they did confirm that it was ADS pipe, so it's actually a you know, structurally sound pipe going under the road there. Do you stop the water while you're digging in that area, or what do you do? There may no. need to be a little bit of dewatering in the area. Um, that's something probably they'll determine once they encounter it out there. And if that's the situation, they'll dewater out of their trench. Um, and typically, I believe they use, you know, a, a dirt bag, which pumps the water out to an area. And they'll surround that with erosion control to keep any sediment from getting in the resource areas on either side. Stream, yeah, you've got a stream going right through there. How far? How far? It just—it could just get to be a project because of this, you know. Yep. The rest of it's fairly clear cut. I mean, when you're talking too about <clears throat> other pipes, though, so you're not sure. Whatever you have to do for shifting, you're still going to stay within the road layout. 
Absolutely, it, it will be in within within the right of way. Um, where I'm the guessing existing pavement is now. Where existing pavement is, you know, sometimes circumstantially they'll end up going into the shoulder. But not into the resources. Absolutely not. Nope. No way. <laughs> Thank you for putting those words. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's that's my only. The rest of it is fairly cut and dry. There's been pipes that go in other places in the town. Everybody, like you said. Here's our little trench, do our work, cover it up, and no major. That's my only concern, you know. I mean, it's the only jurisdictional, but also, yep. you know, not knowing how stable that pipe is or whatever that's underneath, and that's a major, you can see it's a major uh, flow area, so we don't want problems with that. Yeah, absolutely, and if you guys wanted to do any, um, you know, periodic, we could contact you when that work is being done if you wanted to do any inspectional things. We'll or, be there. Hmm. Let me just check. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry. Just chit chat. I can't find my notes. <laughs> oh, I got them. Thank you. Um, all right. And then dollars for the ad. What's that? The, 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 I guess people didn't bring the check for the ad. Yeah, I completely grabbed the wrong folder. Can I mail that overnight? Homeworks at home, right? Uh, well, was yeah. anybody going to come in for that form or um, waiting for? I think we had a form and a check for the advertising fee and then green cards. That's No, they shouldn't because you don't notify your butters for this. Oh, we just had the DP, and I don't know if you guys take those. Well, I just didn't know, if, you know, if somebody wanted to come in with the check and then pick up the form or? Um, otherwise, we'll just. Do you typically mail the form? We're, we're not located that close, so it may be easier to mail. But if we do have to pick it up by hand, then we can bring the check have at that. To, but I, you know, forgive me, I don't know you from Adam, so I'd prefer for us to get the check and then send off the form. Ah, uh, gotcha. That's how, that's uh, how it'll work anyway. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll get it to you one way or the other, and okay. you folks have any we can do that if we need to. <laughs> I guess where is it on Seacock Street? Exactly. It goes from Campbell Street down to. Uh, oh, where's the street? Uh, some of those other slides may give a little better picture of. Down by the power lines. Down by the power lines. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if you could answer this question, but as far as the connections go, the the two ends that you're connecting together. Yep, I believe it's two dead ends that right. are basically but is stubbed. Service connections off of those. Um, like he said, I guess not in Norfolk. I'm. You know, I'm not with the gas company, so I'm not completely familiar. But I don't think we have gas in Norfolk. Not much. Yeah, we do. Down yeah, by Stop River, there's some. There's some on Noon Hill, too. And isn't, didn't they right take here. it to the school? Yeah. Yeah, in the prison. I know they did it down there because they had to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, anybody in the audience Thank for this you. following? Mm. Right here. Uh, Larry Clark, 130 Seacon Street. Just a couple of quick questions. Which side of the street? Uh, is, are those lines going up? For Rick. I think um, he's again, that's not something I can answer at this time. Um, I believe how the gas company actually does it is, you know, they'll get the existing utilities all marked out throughout the project site, and then, you know, as they're constructing it, make a determination where's the most feasible spot to put this man. So you'd pick one side and then stick with it the, the length? For the most part, you know, you typically see it up French for a gas line in a road they, they typically follow the same line but if they have to you know do a jog to avoid you know an, another utility or you know a drainage pipe they'll do so if you see any water gates on one side I think the water is all on one side this will be yeah. on the other side yeah right and also you say you're running two lines are they different pressures they're not different pressures I think um, the difference is the 8 inch is high density polyethylene, the 12 inch is coated steel. I think when you make that bump up from 8 to 12 inch, the coated steel is kind of an industry like standard, I guess. Why do they run two lines, though, I guess, is my question. I think it's probably a point where it's increased flow. There might be another connection point that they need that additional size. It, but both the pressures are residential pressures? If, yeah. Okay, yep. gotcha. Yep. Uh, Trish Carpenter, 120 Seekonk Street. Would you orient this to me just a little bit? Uh, where are the power lines? Could you go to a different slide? I think we can zoom out and see more of the... Um, am I going up or down? I think down a little. Uh, maybe up, sorry. <laughs> okay. 
check. So these might give you a little better idea. Go to the next one down, I think. Right there. I'm not exactly sure where the power lines are, but if anybody. <laughs> I think Janet just gave them a picture. Where, where is the, it looks where is like the culvert that you're, you have to go under? Is that the power lines? I am not entirely sure. I think that's what the stream is. Okay. All right. Mr. Whittleton, if I might, just show them, I'll just show them this. This is for the location, this is up at the state site, and you probably never even know it. Um, there's some concrete mm -hmm. in the power lines, and that's that open area you never notice, yep. but it's got the water on it's the both sides. Yep. And that's just, you wouldn't even notice it. Um, you don't even notice it unless you pull over and peek, sure. and then you can kind of like under the road. And, and the purpose of this is just to connect two dead end lines? Yes, it's um, what they call a betterment project. In, um, I believe it just is improving the overall flow of gas where there will be, you know, increased need. Um, and unfortunately, I guess the gas company is not offering service to the residents of Norfolk. But um, that wouldn't be my area. Um, I just want to clear up one other question. Yep. You said there are two different size pipes. Yep. Are they together or one goes into the other? It one goes into the other. So it's just basically an increased volume. It won't be two pipes down the same trench. Nope. It's just one. Just one. I apologize. This question might have been answered already. Um, Karen Clark, 130 Seekonk Street. Is this something that Columbia Gas came in and proposed to the town or is this something that the town Columbia has Gas has been trying to get this for two years. Okay. We've been trying to get some benefit for the town of Norfolk, but we lose when we deal with public utility companies normally. Okay. Yeah. It's just a connection to make the float of Medfield have more power. Okay. Yeah. And there will be accessibility tees will be put in for the residents or no. No. Unfortunately not. That's what we tried. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I know. <laughs> get something from Medfield for this? Hmm? Can we get something out of Medfield for this? Columbia Gas. Good luck. Yeah. One it's not this question. gentleman's fault. He's no. one of the engineers, but <laughs> we had our bits with the Columbia Gas folks, and when the town deals with public utilities, as I told the last gentleman from MBTA, it's, uh, yeah. our, our influence is very marginal. <laughs> so when, when they're done with that, because when you're done with the whole project, are they going to resurface the road, or are they just patching their trenches? They're going to work with the DPW on that. I think they're not going to accept the patch. They want more like an overlay because that road was. You done said it was within, recently paved. That was done within five years. So yeah, really. typically yeah. Um, they'll do a, a temporary patch, and then when the whole thing's complete, and then more overlay, of a permanent yeah. patch. But again, you know, they'll be. It'll be the public works that yeah. takes care of that. But they're, <clears throat> they've already had conversations with the gas company on that. Do they have contracts for who does the work or whatever? Or they have typical um, contractors that they use regularly. Um, I don't know that off the top of my head. But I you're going to check with the people back at the fort, right, to make sure that they clean up their erosion controls? Because we cannot. We've been reprimanded by the state Absolutely. for putting in a condition. Yeah, and we've actually had. A lot of conservation commissions with the same issues, and not with us personally, but of course. Well, we won't and sign off until they're removed anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> Anybody else have questions? Um, what is the timeline for this to start and to finish? And the second, go ahead, and then I have a second question. Um, their season just started again. They don't work through the winter, so their season just started again in April. Um, and with them trying to get their per again, I don't work for the gas company, so I'm probably not the best to answer all these. Um, with their permits in hand, my anticipation would be that they'd like to start, you know, sometime within the next couple months. Um, in a project of this size, they typically do 80 to 300 feet of installation a day, um, depending on conditions. So if you do the math out of that, it's, you know, likely a, a month or two, I'd say. Um, we could find out some better numbers if, if you're interested, but... The, the only other thing I had was that Seekonk Street is an extremely busy street, um, and it's used by commuters uh, 
coming coming across there. Um, I can see a, a real bottleneck happening. Are are they planning on doing any pre uh, announcement to those commuters that in the next two you know in the next two weeks we're going to start construction something like that? So I can just see a. <laughs> That's not been my experience. A boondoggle for the first week right. when you You'll start this, it's going to be a, 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 a zoo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't commute, so it doesn't matter to me. But correct, correct. Yeah. Maybe the police department can put up their sign and flashing sign. I'm sure they'll I think, need a, I think a week in advance anyway the, that the detail. let yeah, people the, know that it's going to be a problem. Details. You, you might be able to get that update from the public works because they will know. So maybe if we uh, I, mean, I don't care because I don't commute. I understand. But. Yeah, you let them know. They, I'm sure, give you. A, I think they probably would give you a heads up anyway, just as a courtesy. So, uh, any other questions? All right. So basically, they have a request for determination. If we vote uh, for negative request, that means that these folks do not have to come back and file a notice of intent and go through that process. Uh, if we vote in the affirmative, that means they have to come back and file. Where this, go ahead. Where this project really is minimally invasive just by the culvert, and we can watch over that. I don't think there's any need for full filing. Just notifying a butters on something like this would be a nightmare in itself. Yeah. I don't think it serves a purpose. Did you prepare a document? Mm, yes. So I thought. Which letter have you checked? Okay, no, right. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't check because that's you guys. Um, is within the area subject to protection, but will not remove fill alter dredge. So that would be a negative number two. Okay. So basically, we need a motion to offer a negative determination. Uh, Number two. Number two reason. So make a motion to offer a negative determination for the Seekonk Street gas project. Number two. Number two. Okay. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, then you get away from another filing. Thank you. Although in some grounds, they would have liked to see the gas company notify 500 of Butters just to go. <laughs> Maybe that would have got connections in there, but again, that's why they sent you probably. <laughs> I wouldn't help you with the connections if they had to. <laughs> Torches and pickaxes and shovels and stuff. Go sign those two guys. They certainly advertise they want everybody to go to gas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. <clears throat> we have a conservation restriction for the Norway Farm subdivision that we have to sign, Amy. And it was, it was that signed by the selectman's office yet, do you know? I do not know. All right. The subdivision that was just approved, uh, NOAA Farms, has, it's an open space subdivision, and it was required to have a conservation restriction on the open space so no further activity could occur on that. So we have a formal uh, conservation restriction prepared. It was approved by town council. And I believe the process is we sign it, the selectmen sign it, and the state sign it, just to ensure the open space stays as open space. So what I need is a uh, see. motion to accept the conservation restriction for Norway Farms. Correct. We're the first ones to sign this document, although it has been approved by town council. The language. I make a motion that. Uh, we approve and sign the conservation restriction for Norway Farms. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Bob, did you second? That should be an interesting development. Yeah. Um, You've got a condition hmm? for River, River Road. Are you here for River Road? Yes. I don't need those plans because I don't like to get letters 10 minutes before we're having a public hearing. This open hearing was closed. Mr. Goddard should know that. You cannot accept information after a public hearing has been closed. 
So that I did inform him and ask him, do you want to wait until the Board of Health, the uh, ZBA signed off <laughs> before we closed it? And he affirmatively said no. So now he's in that position. He's got some changes to the plan that we cannot accept. So right now, we're going to be voting to issue the orders of condition on the old plan, unless you want to give us an extension and hold off and open up the hearing. No. All right. That being said, you folks have all seen the orders of condition. Uh, we're going to be voting on that plan that's submitted that we approved and nothing else. So unfortunately, we won't be able to accept those plans from you. Uh, motion to approve the orders of condition for 60 River Road. Make a motion to accept the orders of condition for 60 River Road. Second. Second. Discussion? Just a note that, yeah, I, I, did you folks get a copy of the email sent by the yeah. applicant yes. about yeah. an hour, yeah. an hour yeah. before yeah. the meeting? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. just not acceptable. Uh, you can tell them I said so, okay. So we are signing order condition based on the plan that was submitted. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Oh, I thought that was in the language. It's true that any change made. Well, once a public hearing is closed, you can't accept any more information. Yeah, you weren't here at the last meeting, but he was asked if, because there were things we had asked oh, of yeah, him and in the Board of Health, and yeah. he hadn't been through the ZBA. And but I also read the, the email that said, you know, any changes at all. May I speak on the matter? Yes. Uh, I mean, there hasn't been any such changes. It's basically changes that have been made to the site plan to remove the note about the species removal. I read the email in depth. My, my answer stands, we cannot accept that. There were minor changes. Any changes are not acceptable. Okay? That's okay. Uh, they can't remove the pipe or anything. What's that? They can't remove that pipe. What pipe? He has on there to remove that pipe that goes into the river. That can't be done. But that wasn't on our plan. That, that wasn't on our plan. Yeah. Right. That's, that's a major no. change. Yeah. All right, so we have a... We have a letter here from, did you folks read it, from yeah. uh, yes. in the Butterstock River from Lorraine Sweeney? Uh, they're doing a, a filing for potential 40B up on uh, Seekong Street. <laughs> and what happened was the applicant, uh, the developer came to us and filed a request for delineation. And very cleverly, they asked for a request for del uh, delineation on one little aspect on the whole site, one little wetland. They did not ask for any delineation on any resource areas are, that are controlled by the Norfolk Conservation Rules and Regulations and Bylaws. And as far as the state delineation they requested, they did not request a review of vernal pools of streams of one little wetland area. <coughs> So we went on that regard, and that's all that was checked. So that when the ZBA went and they had a review done of the whole site, they found multiple infractions on the uh, land pertaining to the rules of the local conservation commission. <laughs> right now, the state has been out doing a review, and there has been some questionable activity, some interference in local regulations. They came on the aspect that it was a 40B and they go by state law. I did tell the engineer that it's not a 40B yet, for it has been filed, and even if it was, we have not granted a waiver from all the local regulations and bylaws. That being said, you're complying with all the bylaws, so they still intended to disregard any filing concerning the local regulations and they move forward. So now with the neighbor rebuttal with the, state, the DEP moving in, there is now an appeal in process. I believe the state is coming out, a DEP rep, to do a further review when the weather is better to look at the extent of the damage that was done to the uh, local wetlands. So until that is done, our, nothing else, I believe, is being done on the property, and uh, I forwarded to the ZBA, the vice chairman called me, they're going to be putting into their review of their filing with uh, the applicant on disturbance that nothing else is to be done on that site until 
the matters uh, of uh, disturbance were addressed. And if those matters proved to be uh, factual as far as the DEP, DEP goes, then we will then decide on what we're going to do as far as remediation for all the disturbance on the, wo the local wetlands. So right now, mm -hmm. rather than getting our commission involved, we're going to leave it to the DEP reps that are reviewing this project, and we're going to uh, wait until that happens, and I'm hoping the ZBA follows through and, and doesn't allow any more testing on the site. It's very interesting. One of the streams on that site that goes down uh, by a butter's property, which happens to be a, a daughter of the applicant, <laughs> <laughs> there's a seasonal stream coming from a wetland. And by some uh, coincidence, there was a cot path that was filled over that stream. So right now, as it's been reviewed, there is a path over that stream. And what that does by having that path interrupting the middle of that stream, that takes what would be a potential state wetland area that could not be waived by a 40B that would be subject to the approval process. And that makes that a disconnected wetland area, which is only a local wetland area, which means on a filing of a 40B, that would not be jurisdictional. Mm. Am I correct in what I'm saying here? Right, yeah. So that being said, this, this path that we don't know what, when it existed, by cutting across that stream, really, in effect, takes a wetland area that would have state jurisdiction, it makes it non-jurisdictional. So I, I think what the state is going to do is they're going to be doing some soil testing on either side of the stream to see if there is any hydric soils on either side of that stream. And if there are, that would show that there was a connection at that point, and then things go into take a different, uh, a different path. So I think we'll talk to Lorraine perhaps tomorrow and let her know. But right now, as far as no other work being done there, I think this, uh, this is going to be handled by the ZBA. <laughs> And if you folks remember, when they, did, when they did the one flagging of the one state wetland area that they wanted us to review the delineation on, when we went out to review that delineation, they had already disturbed the area. Mm -hmm. So we actually went out there to review this one state wetland jurisdictional area, and everything was already disturbed. So a lot of the facts that I heard on the ZBA meeting from the applicant, the engineer, the, I disagree with totally, and it's in our minutes. So no review was ever done on those local wetlands, and now come to find out there are some issues by this Patrick Garner that was their representative. So that remains an unfinished story, and I think when the state comes out and starts to look at that and determines what was done and what has to be remedied, it'll, it'll take off from there. Is that why you folks are here for this? For Lorraine's letter? Well, that and, and also Seacon Street mm. for that. All right, okay. Yeah. Jan, do we know when they're coming out? Is it the end of the month? Um, Tentatively? He's not sure. Oh. And once he does his testing on site, how long does it take for him to normally to come back for with answers? Answer? Well, he'll get that information, um, and usually, I don't know. You know, I don't know. It's not that often you get somebody coming out. Um, and that, yeah, that's going, I think, to Lorraine because she's the one that uh, put the appeal in. So, mm -hmm. um, And that will go to the ZBA board also, too. Yeah. They're the ones that have jurisdiction of the 40B. So. Okay. Right. Okay. Folks, have any other questions on that? No. You have a lot of activity down there in Stock River area, <laughs> Front Rent, Seacock Street. A lot of meetings. You might as well volunteer for one of the boards since you're here. <laughs> you hear so much. You might, we have an open seat. You know, you're welcome to come. Could right. become a permanent seat for you. Just an open invitation. Does every board come in? You're right there. Just in case. <laughs> you're welcome. It stands open. It stands open. Uh, all right. So other than that, we have any CPA representative update? Nothing. nothing. So you folks are doing nothing over there, right? No, talking, right. a lot of talking, a lot of talking, gossip, All right. nothing.
tangible. Possible wildlife signage at City Mills. You're on for that. Well, it's not City Mills. No, excuse me. City Mills. Are I you? had that on first. <laughs> oh, um, you can. You want those? Yeah. Oh, go ahead, honey. Yeah, I just I'm printed them. Go find the neighbors. What's happening? Thank you. Okay. I said, hon, I gotta stop. You know, a little time in Texas and everyone's a hun now, and I apologize if I offend you. Yeah, sexist. Everyone down there says it. So what is, is this a cleanup spot? You're no, the people had concerns. Right. I think, I don't know, a couple of phone calls about um, beavers getting, becoming roadkill right. casualties. And I even had Doug Williams from Stony Brook um, email or whatever, because they were wondering if some signs could be put up there, city mills pond area because there's a lot of right. that goes to the selectman's office so well we've done signs before because we did the caution turtle crossing signs. right yeah but i still think you can check that'll be your job you can check but we i, I did believe it. that putting new signs up on a, a public way needs conservation we did it before right not to say turtle. it was done the right way though so why don't we before we put signs up those weren't done the right way i didn't say that oh i didn't <laughs> say that you're reading okay. the, so before, check with the selectmen. before okay. we put signs up and we have a bunch of calls, why don't we just check and see if that works for them and if that's okay, and then we can okay. go about the making of them, okay? You're looking to put them on Main Street by City Mills? For, for, right. Yes, sir. And what would the sign say? <laughs> Watch out for beaver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's no, really, yeah. No. It could be like caution wildlife okay. crossing. Uh -huh. I so you got yourself that. into something there. So anyways, moving on, we talk, we have cleanup project that David's going to come up with a list of our cleanup projects for lions and Boy Scouts. And we haven't had any eagle requests recently. Well, that's it. And I, I thought that because, yeah, we've for, discussed right. them is maybe we put together a list and right. then we kind of advertise and say we've got these projects available for volunteer groups. I think that's a great idea and normally how we work at the board here that uh, when someone comes up with that great idea we put them in charge of the subcommittee. We put them oh, in charge of the subcommittee. Subcommittee of one. Okay. And that and that subcommittee will come up with a list of okay. the areas that you think are worthwhile. Yep. And bring it to our next meeting. Okay. And then we'll review it and call maybe a uh, call a report. Right there. Yeah. Color report. Okay. Yeah. Color pictures. Yeah, oh, that, of course. A, I think that's a great idea. If I can, just one thing, because I think you were mentioned. I'll talk with you on for right here. City Mills yes. Pond and, and Comey's Pond, but just, I just want to make sure there's clarification so there's no confusion, because those two properties are actually town property. Yes. No, so but there's. We have there's, jurisdiction there's, on There's. There's, as far as wetland issues, depending on what they're doing, you have town conservation property, but those are town parcels. Yeah. So you might want to double check with selectmen or whoever oh, that it's sir. whatever happens. Is okay. okay. Thank you, sir. My oldest son went to Norfolk Aggie and they did strips like this where they had specific, like if it was trail work, yeah. tree cutting, mm -hmm. that type of stuff, they'd go out for a day and right. do whatever. So sure. if we had something specific, we could bring it to them, Blue Hills. Right, yeah. That would be awesome. Good idea. There's a lot that needs to be done. Yeah. A lot of them were uh, working towards a badge or for uh, community service yeah. time or something. Yeah. So, A lot of projects. We can get the work gangs out there. All right. I'm assuming we have no minutes. No, there are no minutes. Okay. So, uh, unless anybody has anything else? My, my signs for, 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 for the right forest here. for dogs, keep them on their leash. Yeah. Aggressive dogs. Yeah. So I'll come up with a sign for next meeting. There already is a leash law. You know that. There is. Yeah, and I wa and I called Hillary to confirm uh, that it in the woods too, and she said it's everywhere. Right. So I would assume that we don't need to add the word aggressive then. Yeah. I really I know well, you get no. There is a clause that, and she said it, it's tough to how you define it. But if you have verbal control over your dog, you can take them off the leash in those kind of areas. But what does that mean? So, yeah, leash laws are in effect. Okay, so are you familiar with, I mean, I'm very close to Campbell Forest. Are you familiar I, with? I live next to it, too. So yeah, we, we're is across there, it. Is there a small access from Needham Street into there? It shows there's it on one the from, no, there's there one is. from uh, Alice. Yeah. And then the one from us. What I'd like to do before the leaves get up 
is I'm going to do a GPS and get a, there is a trail from Alice over to my side of the woods and I want to mark it and that'd be one of the projects is make a formal trail and then I don't know if we have any public access off of Needham Street. It, it shows this little sliver going all the way over to Needham Street, but I don't, I can't place exactly okay. where it is. Okay, but I'll, during my geography expedition, I'll see if I can find that. But, um, because yeah, I'd like to open it up, and the, the one thing the CPC is looking at is another piece of land that abuts Campbell Forest, mm -hmm. possible purchasing of it. Okay. So we're, where is that located? Mm, I'd rather not say at this point. Okay. Secret. Okay. Oh, secret. Well, okay. do you want somebody else to buy it? <laughs> Janet, what else did you have? No, I was just going to double check because our next meeting is May 16th. Right on the bottom, is is everybody okay with those dates so far? Like the June, July? Are these are all the second Wednesdays in the month. I assume. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. For now, we'll hold to that. All right. Okay. Can I steal it? All right, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you.